Hello and welcome back to this new episode. So in this episode, we're going to speak about jobs and cancellation. So an important topic to understand when dealing with coroutines. What's a job in uh, coroutines? So a coroutine job in Kotlin is a handler to a coroutine that allows you to control and manage its life cycle. So it's cancellable object with a state that can be active, cancelled or completed. So when we use coroutine builders, by default, a new job is going to be created for a specific coroutine. So for example, if we use scope.launch, then there is going to be a specific job that is going to be dispatched and we can use that to control the life cycle. So one caveat we must manage here is the life cycle of the coroutine properly to avoid memory leaks. We should avoid to do more than what is required. So basically you don't have to do it. Now here you can see whenever we launch a new coroutine, basically it's going to be starting as a new, then it's going to go inside the active state, completing and then completed state. So this is the flow of the coroutine that is going to be executed. Now, however, if something else happens here in between, then we can go to the canceling state. And here we can go to canceling and then cancel the state. So all of these are the state of the coroutines which are going to be going on. So we must understand how to cancel them and also how to deal with whenever a coroutine is canceled. Let's see how we can do this. So here we have a scope. And if you don't understand about scope, you can watch the previous videos or episodes I have explained about scopes. Now here you can see this scope is going to take here a context that is going to be the job. And this one is going to provide the instance on this particular scope here. Now you can see whenever we launch here any coroutine, then it's going to return an instance of a new job. So you can see this one is job one. And also here we have also the instance of a job. So they're going to be separate from each other. Now here we are using thread.sleep. And this one is going to help us to wait for all coroutines actually to finish here. Now when we execute this for the first time, you can see that it's going to start coroutine. Then also coroutine 2 is going to be started. Then here it's going to be done. Okay. So here I made this to be both uh, one. Let's change it here and rerun this. Okay. So you can see both coroutines are started and all are done. So we can see coroutine 1 is done and coroutine 2 is done here. Now if we want to cancel, for example, this job 1 here. We can easily just call here job one dot cancel. And this way we can use this job to actually control the life cycle of this. Now let's execute here and see the changes. Okay, so you can see here coroutine one is actually started and coroutine two is started and coroutine two is actually done because here coroutine one is actually uh, canceled and that's why it's not going to print this again. And you can see here when canceling one job does not affect the other job when canceling it. Now let's assume here we have, for example, 20 more jobs. Can we go each and one cancel them? That's why it's the role of the scope here. So the scope is going to play a crucial role here and help us to manage this. So if we have, for example, 20 more of these jobs here, we can easily use the scope to control or cancel all of these uh, coroutines which are going to be launching them. So for example here, we can just call here our scope.cancel. And now instead of this, it's going to cancel all jobs. So job one is going to be canceled and job two is going to be also canceled. Now let's try to execute here. Okay, so you can see both coroutines now are started, but no, none of them is actually finished because we canceled the entire scope. Basically meaning it's going to cancel everything. Now, once you, you cancel a scope, we won't be able to launch a new coroutine after uh, canceling this particular scope. And this is no brainer for now. So for example, we can call here scope.launch. And let's call this, for example, job three. Paste it here. Now let's try to execute here and see after we cancel our scope. Okay, so you can see coroutine one is going to start it and coroutine two, but nothing is going to be uh, launched here so of coroutine 3. So this means whenever we cancel the scope, then everything else is going to be cancelled. Okay, so let's speak more about cancellation of coroutines. But if you're using a view model scope or life cycle scope, you don't need to handle cancellation because both view model scope and life cycle scope are coroutine scope objects that get cancelled at the right time. For example, when the view model is cleared, it cancels the coroutines launched in that particular scope. 
So you don't have to manage this manually because it's already implemented for you. Now we can look if we are going to use custom scope or different places where we're using these scopes, then we can try to cancel them in an efficient manner other than doing what is not required. So we can free up our resources and do other things. So let's see here how things are going to change. Okay, so here we have a simple code. So for example, here we are declaring a start time and we are launching a new coroutine. And then after this coroutine here, we are going to check if this is going to be less than five, then we want to print actually twice a second. So we're going to say, hey, we are processing this chunk here. And basically after that, then we are going to update this next uh, uh, print time, basically in order to check this. So after every second, we're going to be printing twice. Then we can delay here in order to wait for execution to finish. Then we can request, for example, a cancellation of a job. Then we're going to see that the job is going to be uh, canceled successfully. Okay, so let's see when we execute this code here. Okay, so you can see here the coroutine is going to be started. So we are actually executing this print line here. Okay, now after that, then we are processing our chunks. So until we process the chunk two here, we are requesting cancellation. So you can see here we are performing the requesting of cancellation. Now the job is actually canceled. So we know that this function is already executed by printing this job is canceled. But you can see here we are still going until the coroutine is actually finished. So we are doing more even though we have called the job.cancel, but we are still processing the chunk. So if this is going to be a heavy computation, then we are going to be uh, exhausting our threads. But why? Here we have called job.cancel, but it didn't cancel our coroutine. Okay, so the coroutine work doesn't just stop when cancel is called. Rather, we need to modify our code and make it cooperative cancellation. So there is this concept of making the cancellation cooperative. So we can use different techniques in order to make our coroutine actually cancelable at the right moment. So the first case is we can check if actually the coroutine is uh, complete or not, or for example, is actually in active state or not. So here, for example, inside our while loop, we are performing here, uh, i is less than five. So we are performing here a check. Now we can append another check here, and that is called is active. So this is active is a variable that is going to return us if the coroutine is actually active or not. If it's cancelled, then we can immediately stop the work. So for this case, we can try to run here. Okay, so you can see now we are processing the first three chunks. Then you can see we are requesting cancellation and now the job is cancelled. So we are not doing here the heavy computation because the is active is going to be checking it's going to return false then we're going to skip the computation which we are supposed to be doing here okay so that was one way of checking if the coroutine is actually active then we have another way which is calling a suspend function so for example here we can call another function that is called ensure active so this ensure active is the method that is going to instantaneously throw if the job is not active so we can make this the first thing that we are going to do inside the while loop in order to ensure that if there is anything else, then we stop immediately. So it's going to throw here the cancellation exception instantaneously and stop our work. So this one is similar to is active, but this one is going to throw an exception if the coroutine is actually cancelled. So for now, when we try to execute here, now the coroutine is started and again, the job is going to be cancelled and we are not going to do more work. So another case is, for example, if we have a heavy computation and we don't want to exhaust the thread pool. So for example, we are doing CPU heavy task or we, we are fearing that we don't want to exhaust the thread pools with more coroutines. So for this case, we can try to use a yield function. So this yield function here is going to do like how it the ensure active or is active, but now here it's going to pause the current coroutine to let other coroutines also to run within this particular uh, aspect here. So for example, let's try to execute here. You can see that the yield function is going to help us with that, that the coroutine is going to be started and then it's doing the same as how we did before. But now we have another advantage that this coroutine is actually suspended. Now we can easily perform other actions by using the same scope and not exhausting our thread by using those type of coroutines. 
So because here we are just performing a simple action, this one cannot be beneficial. But if you are doing heavy, heavy computation, then this yield function is going to be uh, actually beneficial for your case. Up here, we have uh, three ways which we can use. The first one is using the is active. So this one is going to check if the curatin is still running or not. And also we have the ensure active. So this one is like active, but it's going to throw an exception if the curatin is actually cancelled. Then we have the yield that is going to pause the current curatin to let others to run, so helping with concurrency. Okay, so we said previously that cotrile curatins are actually structured concurrency, meaning that we can easily control the uh, execution of this. And we said that we can use the job for this case. Now there is another case is, for example, we want the execution of particular a code to actually complete so that we can proceed with the next code. So for example, here we want this here in order to actually, for example, do other things here. So we are making a request and we want first this launch here to actually finish. So right now, let's try to execute here our code and you can see the difference. Okay, so you can see here we are actually uh, waiting for the curatins to finish, which is basically here. Now, after the curatin completed, then we can, you can see we are actually executing the curatin too. And then we are going to finish with the curatin. Uh, job number one. Now let's say here we want to use the result that is going to be, for example, returned from this launch here. So we use this data here. Basically, our application is going to crash and basically have a null value. We can we can try this here. So for example, let's say I know we can use a sync here, but for now let's uh, declare here, for example, a variable that is called a, and that is going to be of type int. Let's give it a var, for example. Now inside here, we are doing suspendable computation. Then we want to change the A to, for example, three. Now we want to also print this three here. Let's assume this is null above by default. Let's give it null. So we don't want just to crash your application. Now, after we complete here, we want to use that variable actually. Now, when you try to execute here, you can see the Kotlin curtain here is going to execute with null. Now, we want to wait for this uh, first to finish in order to co continue with other things. So there is one thing that is called join. So for this case, before here, you can see we are waiting for curating to finish. So we can call here our job and call it join. Now, this join here, you can see, is going to suspend the curating until this job is actually going to be completed. Now, let's see the difference whenever we try to run here again. Okay, so we are printing here waiting for curatins to finish. So this one because it's a different one. So we are suspending and doing other work. So you know that it's not blocking the entire thread. And now the curatin one now is done. You can see the execution here. Then the result here is going to be given. So we can use it inside here. So you can see the, the usefulness of this. Another concept here which you have to understand is, for example, we have a job and we want to cancel it. So if we call jo join, then we call cancel it. This one is going to have no effect because here the join is actually going to wait and suspend uh, the curtain until it finishes. Then we are calling canceling because here there is nothing to cancel now. It's going not to cancel anything. So let's try to run here that the curtain is going to be finished because everything is working perfectly. So we are calling cancel after we actually join because the curtain is already finished to execute now. Now let's try to change here the order. Now we are canceling first, then we are going to join here. Now let's try to just run this and see the changes here. Okay, so you can see we are waiting for curtain to finish. Then it's going to complete here and execute this because we called the cancel the first. Now we are seeing that it's going to cancel this curtain to execute and proceed with the rest of code to actually proceed. So this is the effect. So when you want to cancel a curtain, you can easily just cancel it before calling join. Now, a similar effect is going to apply. We use async. So for now here, let's change this. Instead, we can use here async await. Now we can do that and wait for the result. Now the result here, which is going to be, for example, this job here. Okay, so instead of this, because it's going to return a deferred. So for now here, for example, as you can see, we have this result. Let's press Ctrl Q. You can see it's going to return a deferred unit. Now we can await this. We can see the data. So we can call here result.await. 
So this one, as the join has done, this one is going to await for the result and then it's going to print here the data. Here we can change and use the data instead of this variable here. Okay, and here instead, let's return three for example. So this is the really cool part when we have a suspendable computation and we want to return a variable, then we can just easily use async and actually return it after the suspendable computations, which we have done. Now let's try to run here and see the effect. Okay, so you can see here, actually everything is working perfectly. Now we can do similar as how we did before. We can call here, for example, our result. Now we want to cancel this, so we can call here dot cancel. Now let's try to execute here. Okay, so everything is working perfectly. Now let's try to reverse the role and first cancel before doing anything else. So we want to cancel this, then we are awaiting the result and we're going to get some uh, issues here. Okay, so you can see the exception is going to be thrown because this deferred was cancelled. So we are waiting for a curating that was actually cancelled. So we cannot get the result. And this one should not surprise you because we are cancelling something that we are waiting for it. So for this case, we are going to get an exception. So a rule of thumbs here, don't cancel a, a, a curating that is actually awaiting for a result. So if we use async here, don't call result.cancel before calling await. Another thing which you have to keep in mind, so let's say for example here we are doing something that is going to take up resources, so we want to free up after we complete or if there is a cancellation. So let's assume here we have a launch. Okay, so instead here of data, then here we can call it A. So let's assume here we are performing things that are heavy computation and we're declaring some resources. So we want to free up whenever if there is any uh, cancellation is happening, so that we can free up everything. So here we can use a try catch block, and this is the cancellation exception, which we can try to catch here. And here we can call finally. Okay, so here we can proceed to execute our code. Okay, so here we catch our exception, and basically here we can just write a print function and say, hey, we are just canceling. Then here finally, we can actually clean our resources. So we can say cleaning, and here we can say cleaning done. Actually here our result is cancelled, so what we want to do here is to specify the delay. Let's specify here 1000 milliseconds before we cancel it, so we can give it a time to actually execute this. And after it executes, then it's going to be cancelled so that we can easily see these uh, print functions that are going to happen here. Now let's try to execute here our code. Okay, so you can see here it's executing everything. You can see it's going to cancel, then cleaning then cleaning done is going to be called. So one thing here to note is that the finally part is actually called, but now let's assume that we have a suspend function that is required to be called when we are cleaning up our resource. So here, let's assume that we call delay for 100 milliseconds. Now let's try to execute here and see. Okay, so you can see here we are printing canceling and printing cleaning, but we're not printing here uh, that cleaning is actually done. So this means that the actual curating is not actually uh, freeing up the resources because a curating that is actually cancelled does not suspend. So we have to manage this and basically here we can do a simple thing that is actually used here with context and we can use a special uh, context here that is called non-cancellable. And this non-cancellable here is going to help us in this Yes, a scenario here. So it's not going to cancel and with context, this is going to switch to a different context or a thread that is called non-cancellable. So we cannot cancel it. So when we execute now, you can see that the curating is actually completed, is canceling, cleaning, and also cleaning, done. So you can see everything is actually now freed up. So we don't have to do more than what is required. And for this case, we free up everything and our app is uh, performant and functional and efficient. Okay, so now let's look here at this example here. We are creating here a scope that has an instance of a job. And this job has two things. We have the first curating and the second curatines, which we are launching here. So you can see we are printing that if the job is working, then it's going to be done. And here the job two is actually working, then it's going to delay. Then we're going to print here if actually it's done or not. And here we're joining all two jobs. 
So meaning that we are waiting for the completion of all jobs before proceeding with anything else. Then here we are getting an exception if there is any exception that is going to happen here. Now let's try to execute here our code and see. So now job one is working, job two is working, and job one is done, and all the jobs are done here basically now. So everything here is looking perfectly. Now let's assume here we have an error inside our job two. So our job two is going to fail. Now let's look here, is job one going to complete or not? Now let's try to execute here. Now you can see job one is working, job two is working also. Now job two has thrown an exception. So you can see job two has failed. Now all jobs in the scope are going to be also cancelled. Why? Because here job one did not complete by calling this job one is done. And basically now it's going to crash and everything is going to fail. So assume this is going to be the UI, then everything is going to fail. So let me explain why. I've declared here a scope and that scope contains a job. Now we have the first child and also the second child here. Now let's assume here our first child is going to receive an error. Then it's going to tell its parent, hey, I have got an exception. So now this exception is going to tell the scope, hey, you have to uh, cancel everything because now our mission is actually compromised. So for this case, it's going to call for child number two also to be canceled. And for this case, it's going to cancel the entire operation. So for this case, all of the scope or coroutines launch on that scope are going to be canceled. So this is the problem. Assume you are inside a UI, then there is a scope that a coroutine inside that is actually cancelled or there is an exception happening, then all other children on that particular scope are going to cancel. So our entire UI is going to freeze or uh, our entire uh, application is going to actually crash. So we have to avoid this. How can we do this? Let's see how we can solve the issue. Okay, so to solve the issue here, instead of using a job, so a job directly propagates the errors directly to the parent caller and the parent caller is going to cancel all the entire scope. So for this case, our scope here is going to be canceled, but we can change this. There is another way of creating a job and that is called a supervisor job, which is a special case. Let's call this a supervisor job. And now you can see inside this supervisor job, that is an active uh, of the supervisor job can fail independently of each other. So this is the important aspect here. So everything can fail independent of each other. So if now job one or job two is going to fail, then it's going to fail by itself and not affecting all other jobs which are available inside that particular scope. So for now, let's try here to execute our code and you can see that this one is going to fail but the scope one is going to proceed and finish its work now let's try to execute here again so you can see job one is working and job two is working now we throw an exception here inside job two and you can see job one is actually proceeding and it's actually done okay so let's recap here so cancelling entire scope so when we cancel the entire scope so everything inside there is going to be cancelled and all our other coroutines which you have launched now, when we want to cancel specific coroutines, we're going to use a job.cancel in order to actually cancel that specific coroutine. And also comparative uh, cancellations. So we have heavy tasks, don't stop immediately when they are cancelled. So for this case, we have to make our coroutine cooperative. So your coroutine codes need to check if it is either active or using is active or ensure active. That is going to help us in managing this. Another case, the functions like yield also help us to make coroutines called cancelable by checking if the coroutine is still active and also helping us with other functionalities. And another case is resource cleanup on cancellation. So we can use a try catch finally in order to handle cancellation and clean up the resources. So to suspend in the cleanup code, we have to use a context with a non cancelable context in order to clean up our code. Now, view model scope and life cycle scope actually automatically cancels coroutines when the scope actually ends. So whenever we use the view model, then the view model is cancelled. So the scope is also going to be cancelled. But if we are using custom scope, we have to ensure proper cancellation using the cancel. Yes, I hope you have enjoyed these uh, sessions. So if you find these videos uh, actually helpful, please don't forget to provide a like, subscribe and share this to others so that they can benefit from this. So until next time, See you. Bye-bye for now.